Who is the first person to uh, congratulate you? Uh, that's uh, it's my friend. Basically, okay. he told me the result. I did not know the result. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so you didn't check it yourself. Another one who break yes. it for you. Yes. That's great. And who is the first call after uh, that? After that, my father. Your father. Yes. Who all uh, are at your home within your family? Uh, I have I mean, my father, my mother, and an elder sibling. Okay. So where are they based? Uh, they are currently, my parents are currently based in Mumbai and okay. my brother is based in Hyderabad. Alright. So can you tell us a little bit about your academic background? Uh, I did my uh, BA honours English and uh, then MA English uh, from Miranda House. Okay. So I have a background in English literature which is also my option for the services. Yeah, Miranda House is uh, an amazing college, isn't it? It is. I mean, it has contributed so much to my personality. I am eternally grateful to that institution. So I assume, uh, I hope correctly that your option was also in literature? Yes. So uh, how much did that help you? The, how, how much easier was it for you to tackle mains and GS knowing that literature was something that you already mastered? It was a cakewalk in terms of optional because 95% uh, of the course was, uh, had been covered somewhere in graduation or post-graduation. I was able to use some of my notes uh, from my, uh, you know, academic time and uh, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, it, it is a lot of fun, so it takes the stress away from the GS preparation. And it's something that you're passionate about. Definitely. So, uh, you didn't go by the cliche norm that you should not take X subject, take Y subject, or that Y subject is more successful. So, there was no such thing that hindered your uh, preparation at all. I always believed in following my heart, and uh, so that is what I do, and that is what I did. With that's that. great, and that's what I also advocate on the <laughs> side. So, uh, was this your second attempt or not mistaken? Uh, yes, but it was the first serious attempt. Uh, yeah, the first one was pretty casual, so... Okay, so define casual. I, uh, we were talking earlier. Yes. I would love for you to be able to uh, tell that out a little better right. as to how, how and what you did for your first attempt and how it did not hinder your second attempt for the right. sake of the students who are listening to the video. So, uh, basically, uh, I started pretty late for the first attempt. And uh, so I decided to do only the basic books and see where it goes. So I tried to do as many NCRTs as possible, I mean, you know, as much as time allowed. And I tried to solve a few mock papers. And uh, I mean, it was an okay attempt, but uh, so much more was uh, left to be done. I think the biggest learning from my first attempt was that I was very clear about how I wanted to approach the exam after that. Okay. So, I mean, how I was going to build on my base. And you know, NCRTs were always the mainstay of my preparation. So if I can uh, interrupt you and ask you, so you were preparing for your second attempt from your first attempt itself? Definitely. I mean, everybody I think who's given, you know, multiple attempts, they must have learned something and, and you know, my, I learned so much from my first attempt. So that's great and uh, what I'd like to be able to emphasize uh, and understand from what you have said is that first attempt onwards you were preparing your basics in a manner that they help you stay with your second attempt because in the first time we didn't have enough time. Would I be like yes. to so? Yeah. And you were completing your master's, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I was. Okay, so that's great. And uh, what were the biggest challenges? I, uh, after talking to you, I believe there have not been too many challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about, little bit about uh, your preparation? And if at all you had any challenges? Uh, I think most of the challenges that anybody faces are internal. Okay. It's really about, you know, uh, how much you're able to focus when, if you need a break, are you taking that break or not? So, uh, I mean, I have been very consistent. So, like, I wasn't a person who would, you know, study uh, 11, day, 11 hours or 14 hours in one day, two days, three days, and then take a break. So, I was consistently studying, like, six hours, eight hours for a, you know, without taking a break for a long time. But when I took that break, I would, you know, really relax. Okay. And one more thing that I would uh, like to say is that uh, even while studying, I made sure that the things that I really liked, like I used to meditate for 5 to 10 minutes every day. Oh, I used to go for a run at least 4-5 times a week. So all these things like really, you know, it made me happy, it kept me in a good mood. And I had so many people to, you know, love and support me that, you know, I, it was and very, very important. That is very, very important. So it is. So I have three questions which I picked up from what you told me. One was the 6 to 8 hours. Second was meditation and third was running. So uh, I'll start in a reverse order. Yes. So was running something that you started doing after you started preparing for a specific cause along with meditation? Was running and meditation something you started doing to help you concentrate better? Or was that a call that you took for some other reason? Uh, running I started a little before I started preparing. Uh, one of my friends suggested that you know you should, you could try it as fun actually. So I did it was. So that has been continuing since then. Uh, meditation? I would say yes. I mean, uh, I 
I did not do it that regularly, but with preparation, I realized that uh, being calm in your head is as important as studying. I would say, you know, 50 percent of it is really calmness. On the day I gave the prelims, I meditated in the morning. I meditated between the exams, and I was, you know, okay. meditating all the time. And so I did not get perturbed by, you know, the uh, questions which I was not able to answer because this time the paper was a bit unexpected. Yes, so indeed. that has really helped me and meditation has started with civil services, yes. And uh, I believe that also helped you turn off, as you said, when you were taking a break, you were being able to switch up entirely. Yes. And yes, because yes. you were, had a better control on your mind, you were being able to relax yourself completely. Yes. And almost six, six to eight hours that you were studying a day. Yes. Six hours, more like it? Uh, I think six I, to eight. Yeah, I mean, I was studying six hours, then I heard that, okay, eight hours is also possible, <laughs> and I tried to push myself a yeah. little. So, but did you manage it as consistently? Yes, yes okay. I did. Like, because six hours, it was not like when I said six hours, when I was doing six hours consistently, you build that stamina. Yeah. So when slowly, it was not that, you know, from today onwards I'll start eight hours. Right. Initial hiccups, but then once I started with eight hours, then I was consistent. With eight and did you take any weekly breaks as well, or was it all seven days of the week? See, uh, see, most of my breaks were like, you know, okay, I take a break from GS and I read a novel, but it was my okay. option. But uh, apart well, from that's that, a, that's a benefit you <laughs> have which most others don't. But I think I took a break whenever the hell I felt like it. Okay. So, really so whenever your mind said you need a break, you took a break. Yes, if it was one day, it's okay. If it was like, yes. you know, 15 years old, it's okay. But if I needed a break, I took it. You took it. Yes. And I completely agree with you that because you know I keep uh, getting very surprised when people say you have to study 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 365 days over here, and I have a simple question: How can you do that? It's not possible to study 10 hours, 12 hours a day for 365. <laughs> Even work, uh, yes. you can't work for so many hours. You need your Sunday off at least. It's not needed also. I, yes. mean, I think it only clutters the money for the Yes, you PSC wants a good personality and uh, that really reflects when you have a wholesome personality, when you're yes. you know, not bogged down by one thing only. So yeah, and meeting you and talking to you, I can really tell your personality is very positive and very vibrant, I must say. So, uh, coming back to your preparation, so uh, how did you segregate or uh, intertwine prelims, mains and interview, the preparation for each of the series? Um, uh, I would say uh, one of the things that I learned from my first attempt is that it is a bit stupid to prepare only for prelims. Mm. So, uh, from when I, you know, once I gave the exam, I was not going to clear, so after that I decided that I will have a very integrated approach. From day one, I had started practicing answer writing. Okay. So at least I used to do four or five answers a week, and then you increased it as and when you felt like it. And uh, everything that I read, I used to read it in a wholesome manner. And analysis part and uh, factual part, both of them. And interview is something that you prepare for all your life. And uh, when you start focusing on interview, you just refine yourself. I don't believe that you need to change your personality. You just need to be the best version of yourself. Yes. And UPSC will, I am sure. Uh, you will find the best way to express yourself. Yes, and uh, I mean, you be a best version of yourself, you'll also express yes. <laughs> so, that is so, I have a couple of questions over there. So, uh, how often were you practicing MCQs, the objective question for prelims? As you said, you were writing right. four to six answers a week, but what were you doing for prelims practice? Or is that something you right. only closer to the exam? No, I mean, one did, uh, you know, from one of these websites you picked up, uh, you just started following one key and do daily questions from right, here. Right. But in five, six questions daily. Okay. And uh, you have the answers also. Yes. I mean, that is a big part of it. Of and uh, as the exam came closer, you did more and more mock papers, basically. Yes. And one more question about practice. How often did you practice answer like? Was uh, meeting you and conversing mm -hmm. with you, I have a feeling that your essay would have been quite good. And that may have been an area where you may have scored well. So, what was your approach to essays? Um, uh, well, I did not think that there was much of an approach till I actually entered mains. Okay. So, and then I gave my first essay paper and I realized that I need to work on this. This is not happening, you know, as yes. it should happen. So, then I read up a few uh, articles online about, you know, how to write a UPSC essay because the topics are a bit off the cover. Yes. Yes. I had written stories earlier, but these were on uh, topics from current affairs and all that. So, then I started practicing. And I practiced a lot for the essay. Like I used to write, I used to, okay, what can I, what else can I do with this? And, you know, uh, stories, trying to think about my own experiences, which I may be able to include. Literature was another, you know, that you know, if I can use any literary example. So yes. I worked a lot on the essay. 
So uh, I, I don't think it comes naturally, but I think you know I had like a bit of a problem. But I think otherwise my SAP was fine. Okay, I have a question in retrospect and to future aspirants who are watching and listening to us. Uh, would you suggest writing an essay more regularly, like how you had been practicing for prelims and mains? Almost throughout your preparation, mm -hmm. have you been writing essays more often? That would have been more advisable. To I mean, the I don't have any regrets. If even no, if no regrets. Start, I mean, no, it is that even if you start off to means there is really enough time for essay. That is not less. Okay. But I think it could be a very enjoyable way of if you write one essay in fifteen days or one month. If I were to give this attempt again, I would definitely do that. That I would write essays regularly. Yes. Yes. Because it is not always that you feel like mugging up facts and then it's a beautiful way of you know to let loose your creativity and uh, improve at the same time. I would completely agree with you on that. I think uh, practicing on a weekly basis, practicing at the end of covering each, chap uh, each yes. subject and writing essays, even if one is not confident of the amount of knowledge they possess at that time, but to keep writing, I believe, uh, yes. was something that really gave you the winning edge, if I'm not mistaken. Really, that is true, yes. And uh, who was the board that uh, took your interview? Uh, it was uh, Manoj Manu Sony Sir's board. Okay, how was your interview? How confident uh, were you feeling when you got out of it? I was pretty, I mean, I was quite happy. So, I, when I had gone into the interview, I had only one thing in mind that I'm going to have fun. I mean, marks, we do, who knows what I'm going to get, but at least I'm here, let me enjoy this time. Right. So, I mean, we even like, I think there were two moments in the interview where everybody was laughing, including me. So, it was a fun interaction. Some answers were good, some answers, I mean, you know, at that moment you're under pressure. Yeah. So, that is there. But uh, overall, I think it was a good interview. At least I personally felt that, yes, now, you know, I'll, I've done well, it's okay, let's see what happens. I believe you took a mock with uh, AK Saxena sir as yes, a board yes, and Nick Shiksha. Yes. So was that helpful? And if at all, did you get any suggestions that you were, being, that you were able to implement? So uh, I would like to say that it was my first interview, uh, you know, proper interview uh, that I had given. Mm. And I, had, I mean, I got a lot of positive feedback. And uh, also like some suggestions that uh, I could reduce my gesticulation and things like that. And I think it really helped and it sent me into a really good mood I think and that continued uh, okay. to work till the interview. And one thing I would say is that uh, Satsena sir had already told me that I make it. Oh, wow. So on that first interview he said we will make it. And uh, so I just believed so okay. Yeah, I believe this experience and understanding of the UPSC is uh, very treasured. So that's what I guess uh, he could tell you straight away that yes, you're somebody who will uh, make it through and get selected. Yeah, I mean, it's good to hear these things. It really acts as positive enforcement and it was I related to you. So, okay, on a closing note, what would be your word of advice to the aspirants? I would say that please enjoy. This is, I mean, you get a chance to reach so many interesting subjects. I'm sure whatever options that. Uh, Anyone has, they have a lot to, you know, give you. So I would say that please enjoy the process. And if you really enjoy the process and you're able to, you know, keep a calm mind and study properly, I really don't think that, um, you know, you won't be able to make it. I would completely agree with you. First, you have to love what you're wanting to do. Yes. And the only way to continue loving it is if you're enjoying it. Yes. And the only way to enjoy it is you're understanding it. <laughs> and to be able to understand, you have to have a calm peace of mind. Yes. And uh, I'm glad that you've been able to do that and you've succeeded. Uh, so soon and so young and uh, I have two final questions for you. Yes. Uh, what prompted you to prepare for this examination? Um, I, so it's a very cliche question, I know, but still, what, what was uh, the motivation? See, basically, uh, at one point of time, any, all of us sit down and think about what we want to do in life. And I really was interested in public service. I, I mean, I thought it was a much better motivation than earning a big yes, salary or working uh, in a company. So I thought it's a great, uh, great opportunity. And uh, apart from that, uh, since my father is in the civil services, I okay. had a bit of familiarity. So I have to give it that. It can't be, you know, uh, that can't be cool out, yeah. So, but I really was interested in public services. This is what I've been wanting to do for many years now. So. So IIT Diksha, uh, what will be your, uh, you know, calling when you become, a, uh, when you get assigned to a district and you start your work, is there anything that is close to your heart that you want to change, that you want to improve, that you want to uh, uplift in our country, anything that you want to focus on specifically? Mostly, see, I would like to first learn a lot to uh, more understand what I want to focus on. But as of now, if I were to speak about today, the three issues that I really, you know, find close to my heart are education, women and environment. So these three is... Uh, I couldn't agree more. I just couldn't agree more. 
Because education is what shapes our country. It is the women who make sure the youth of tomorrow are getting educated in the right manner. Because after all, it is the women who are the strongest people in the house. And environment, it is the air and it is everything around us. And I completely agree with you and I will congratulate you again. And I am sure you are going to make us all proud and make the country a better place. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Okay.